This month's bullet journal theme is inspired by the combination of the flower and hair moon. Hello to all you lovely and wonderful people. Thank you for joining me with this plan with me video. I am Lynette and welcome to my channel. For May, I'm setting up my spreads in a B5 dotted notebook from Notebook Therapy and using a selection of different shades of fine liners from Unipin. All materials that I am using in today's video, I will list in the description below in case any of you are interested. With a standard HB pencil, I sketched out a simple scene of a hair gazing at the flower moon. I'm planning on keeping my spreads this month simple but pretty with a very limited monochrome palette with maybe a few hints of grey here and there. I started off drawing out my design in pencil first because I like to make sure that I've got the placement of everything centralised to the page and to make sure that I'm happy with the overall design before I commit pen to paper. The first pen I picked up was a 0.3 size nibbed fineliner but then the pen was not flowing right for some reason so I had a look at the selection of pens that I had in front of me and I noticed the brush pen which I haven't tried using yet, well not this brand anyway. It came with a pack of 12 assorted fineliners which I think I showed in a recent unboxing video. So I thought I'd give it a go and I loved how pleasant it was to draw with so I stuck with it. The reason I have chosen this particular theme for May is because May's full moon is called the flower moon. Other names include the planting moon, the milk moon, and amongst others, the hair moon. The flower moon is named after the abundance of flowers that grow in the northern hemisphere in May. The Celtic and Old English names for May's moon are mother's moon, bright moon, grass moon, and hair moon. I wonder how many times I'm gonna say the word moon in this plan with me video. The myth of the moon gazing hair reflects ancient beliefs. Pagans believed that seeing a moon gazing hair would bring growth, rebirth and abundance, new beginnings and good fortune. I don't know about you guys, but I could definitely do with all of that this month. <laughs> the hair is known to be the sacred goddess of Ustra and eventually became known as the Easter Bunny. Also, the hot cross buns that we eat at Easter. See, I was always taught at school that it was to do with the crucifixion of Jesus. But apparently, the cross on the bun is said to represent the four quarters of the moon. These buns were originally pagan offerings and were often hung from rafters to scare off evil but lurked in dwellings. So I thought it'd be a really nice idea to combine all of these things together for my cover page. Looking for inspiration for this theme, I was looking for ideas that would be quick and fairly simple, as time does not seem to be my friend at the moment. There just doesn't seem to be enough time to do anything or everything that I need to do. I came across an image of this paper cut piece of folk art from the artist Kirsty Hakeney on Not On The High Street website and I loved it so much that I wanted to recreate the image but put my own spin on it. I found the central point of the page and then freehand drew a rough circle big enough to fill enough of the page but not so big that it's too much. I wanted plenty of space for me to be able to add the title of May at the bottom of the image. In Kirsty's original paper cut version, she's got a waning crescent. Well, I wanted to depict a full moon, obviously, with doing the whole theme on the flower moon, which is the full moon of May. To draw the circle of the full moon, I couldn't find my compass, so I used the inner circle of my washi tape. To get the basic shape of my hair, I used a series of three circles or oval shapes and then built a recognisable hair shape around those ovals. So a basic rabbit shape with big ears and longer feet. And pretty much I'm just going to colour him all in. I am going to leave a few little spots of negative space running down his back. Also for his eyes and underneath his snout or nose. And then leaving enough negative space so that there's definition between his legs and his body. Now that I have all the important elements of the design in place and on paper, I can now just add lots of grass and leaves and floral shapes surrounding and framing the hair and the moon. I wanted to add some more highlights and designs to my hair, so I'm using a white jelly roll gel pen. And then for the moon, I'm going to be using this tom Tombow brush pen. I didn't want to like just colour in the moon grey so I'm just adding outlines and little lines here and there that then I used a paintbrush and some clean water to blend those lines a little bit so that they didn't seem so harsh. Then with a light grey 01 Unipin fineliner I just went around the bottom edges of the moon 
and added some foliage and flowers. And then with a 01 black fine liner, I added some flowers and leaves growing from this branch and then a couple of blossoms as if they're sort of blowing away from the tree, just as a little nod that he's looking at the flower moon. With everything done with my design, the only thing left to do is add the title of May, which I'm doing in just a simple handwritten font, which I thicken up on the downstroke of the letter. Nothing too elaborate because I'm not very good with typography, but you know, just enough so that it's not my boring handwriting. And then on the up flick of the Y, I add a little flower. Onto my calendar page, I haven't used a double page spread for a few months for my calendar setup, so I've decided to create one for this month. The boxes for each of the days are 5x5 five five squares, with a space of two squares in between the next. This gives me plenty of room for two sections of important dates and monthly goals, and I'm sticking them to the right of my calendar. With the light grey Tombow brush pen, I'm going to highlight each of the dates with um, a little dot and then write the dates on top of that in a black fine liner pen. Sorry, I meant dark grey fine liner pen. Now for the fun bit, making it all pretty. After drawing all of those boxes, I'm decorating the spread with a leaping hair at the bottom of the page and a small little moon decorated with a simple leaf shapes and flowers at the very top of the calendar. To keep the theme running throughout the monthly spreads, I'm going to continue using silhouettes of hairs and foliage and grass and things, just like in the cover page. Once I've finished colouring in this sleeping hair, I'm going to add grass and flowers and angle the blades of grass around the hair so it looks like they're blowing in a breeze and to create some movement. And I couldn't help myself, I had to add a couple of little toadstools because no magical images are complete without some mushrooms. And like I did on the cover page, I'm gonna use a white gel pen to add some moons and stars onto my leaping hair. For the moon, I'm doing exactly the same thing as I did again on the cover page with the Tombow brush pen. Once that's coloured in, I can add some flowers and leaves, then add the titles of the days of the week using initials, and then add the title of May across my moon in the same handwritten font that I used on the cover page. And that's pretty much it for my calendar setup. I've also highlighted the top of the boxes for the important dates and my goals for the month with the same gray Tombow brush pen that I used for the moon. Next up is my mood tracker. Now I'm really happy with this idea. So basically I've drawn a crescent moon and I've sketched out 31 flowers in different shapes, types of flower and various sizes in the crescent for me to color one flower a day in a color that will reflect my overall mood for that day. The main flower shapes I've created are your basic five to six petal shaped flowers. And then I've added some flowers that have got a bit longer, thinner petals, kind of like daisies, I guess. So there's a bit of variation in the design and it doesn't all look the same. Once I made sure that I had the right amount of flowers counting several times, I could then fill in the rest of the moon with various sized leaves and foliage, and then a little bit of dot work to fill in any of the empty spaces that are left. The different moods that I'm tracking this month are excited, happy, okay, tired, stressed and sad. I think the colour palette that I'm going to use for the flowers are blues, purples and greys, mainly because they're my favourite colours but I think it'll go really nice with the whole theme and the black outlines and all those colours together just seem quite magical to me. So at the end of the month I should end up, hopefully, with a really pretty moon. There may be some days where you know you start off having a really good day and then you end up having a bad day. Where it's flowers, I can do several colours within the petals for each of the days and they should end up looking quite interesting. To finish off my mood tracker, I'm adding some beadwork sporadically around the moon with a few dangly gems and some stars. I 
I add the title in the same font that I've been using on the previous pages to the center of the crescent and then dot some stars and sparkles around the title. I thought the title was looking a little bit empty and I'm a bit of a sucker for stars and sparkles. I add some more beadwork and droplets to the bottom of the moon and then at the very bottom of the page I'm going to use a key for the moods I'm tracking using stars. And that's it for my mood tracker. Onto the adjacent page I'm going to have a tracker page for my habits, for my sleep and also for my social media. In previous months I have had individual pages dedicated to each type of tracker and then I realised I'm unnecessarily using too many pages when I can fit them all into one and hopefully then I won't have to replace my notebook as quickly. So the top third of the page is dedicated to my habit trackers. I'm drawing out eight individual little calendars for each of the habits that I'm going to track. Nothing elaborate, just very basic calendar shapes, but just to make them a little bit more interesting, I'm doing four in a dark grey and then the other four in a lighter grey fine liner pen. which I will add a title to once I've got all the line work done for each of my trackers. For my sleep tracker, I'm using what I do every month, a basic graph. So the date of the month is recorded on the horizontal axis and on the vertical axis, I'm recording how many hours sleep that I'm gonna get each night. So along the bottom, I add the numbers from one to 31 and then going up the graph, starting from the bottom up, I go from 8 p.m. then to 8 a.m. And that way I can record what time I go to bed and what time I wake up and see how many hours I've slept with one simple line. For the social media trackers, I've used my washi tape again to make circles, and I'm gonna be tracking my Instagram growth, my YouTube, and my Facebook, which I still haven't set up yet after I got hacked in the new year and then my account got deactivated. But in each circle, I'm just gonna put in what the numbers were at the start of the month and then at the end of the month and see how much growth I've had. And this reminds me that I need to keep posting to Instagram too, because I just keep forgetting. I'm not very good at this game. I just need to add some titles to each of the trackers now. On the title of the sleep trackers, I add a couple of little crescent moons, and then on the habits, a couple of little leaves, and then highlight the titles with the light gray brush pen. After that, I add some titles to my habit trackers where I am gonna be tracking my reading, creating affirmations, exercise, bed before midnight, vitamins, and meditation. So that's all my trackers for the month and now on to my weekly spreads. As I said before, time is not on my side at the moment, so I'm going to do a Dutch door layout for the entire month, so I'm only having to do one design for the whole of the month. By sectioning the lower two thirds of the page with my brush pen um, for my days of the week and so that I have the top third to add a design. With the 0.5 dark grey fine liner I can section off seven columns for the days which are nine boxes across with a space of one box in between each column and that way I can fit all seven onto the double spread symmetrically. On the top of my columns I add a strip of washi tape from Notebook Therapy. I think it's the Moonlit Spells, it's beautiful and I've been looking for reasons to use it and I thought it would be perfect for this theme. I repeat the same process throughout the whole rest of the month and then now I'm going to cut out the tops of the two thirds of the pages that I don't need with a craft knife first and then on the section of the spine of the notebook I'm going to use my sharp small scissors. It's a lot less fiddlier than the craft knife and I'm less likely cutting something that I shouldn't. With any of the excess paper that I cut away, I will put aside for something else because I don't like wasting stuff. And then for the design at the top, I'm going to use a very similar theme to the cover page. But this time around, instead of having one hair, I'm going to give him some friends and do four. <laughs> and create different silhouettes of hairs in various poses. I'm really loving how quick and simple and effective these little designs for my spreads I tell you what, I'm really loving how quick it has been to create these spreads for this month. Usually I have the tendency to spend ages on each layout, but sadly I just don't have the time at the moment to do that and because I've got so much other creative stuff going on in my life, I just feel a little bit burnt out when it comes to my bullet journal. But I don't feel like these simple designs are any less aesthetically pleasing. It just goes to show that sometimes less is more and simplicity is sometimes best. With being a creative person, sometimes I put the pressure on myself that I must create these elaborate spreads for my bullet journal each month. And as much as I do love creating those kind of spreads, sometimes it's just not realistic or practical. 
and then kind of defeats the whole purpose of what bullet journaling is all about, which is basically a tool to help you make your life a lot easier. Do any of you out there do the same sometimes? I'm sure that anyone who does bullet journaling has been guilty of doing this at least once. But anyways, back to my own bullet journal. As you can see, on the last week of the month is a three day week. So on the other side of the page, I've got a blank space to write all my achievements and anything else like that that I wanna add to my monthly spread. But for now, I've left it blank because I'm not quite sure what I want to do with it yet. I almost forgot to mention, for the days and the dates at the top of each column, I've used the grey brush pen for the numbers and then with the light grey fine liner, I've written the days of the week. To my bunnies, I add, sorry, hairs, <laughs> I add um, the stars and moons again and we're pretty much done here. I'm really happy with how these spreads have all turned out. They've got a real folk art vibe to them and I love that. As I'm sure most of you are too, I'm a big fan of Shada Campbell and I love the folk art themes that she's been doing this year and I'm a bit green-eyed with jealousy that I didn't come up with that idea myself first. But there you go. So question for you guys, I have an idea for next month but I'd be really interested to know if you guys have any particular themes that you would like me to do for future bullet journal spreads. If there's any particular theme that you'd like to see me do then please let me know in the comment section below. Obviously, I want to create content that you guys enjoy, so don't be shy. If you have any ideas or thoughts, then don't hesitate in letting me know. For June's Plan With Me video, I'm going to try my hardest to get it out before the end of the month finishes, unlike these last two months. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments section below. All your comments and your likes really do help out this channel, but most importantly, I genuinely love hearing from you guys. I'm so incredibly lucky to have such supportive and lovely viewers on this channel. I just want you to know that I appreciate you so, so much. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully see you in the next one. And until then, take care.